Welcome to Because We Care for Young Homemakers Day, a weekly program filled with information on the art of homemaking. And now here's your host, Kimberly Ross. Hello and welcome to Young Homemaker. Today we are going to find out about the art of quilting. My guest today is Ann Smith. She's County Extension Agent with the Cooperative Extension Service of The Ohio State University. And Ann has brought a beautiful display of quilts with her and she's also going to tell us how we can make our own. Thanks for coming. American quilting has its roots from way back. And I'm wondering, has it always been popular, or is there suddenly a revival in the interest in quilting? I think currently we're seeing a revival in the interest of quilting right now. Uh, if we look historically at quilting, it served a utilitarian purpose. Uh, when the colonists came over, they came over to colder weather, as some of the type we're experiencing, and they, the, the cloth and fabrics were scarce. They needed to put together what they could for blanketing uh, for themselves, and they did that through quilting and cutting pieces together. Today, however, we're, we certainly are seeing a revival of quilting, and quilting is an expression of an art form today. It's fascinating, it's interesting to see the art form uh, that persons seem to enjoy so much. Also, I couldn't discount the fact that uh, November is Family Life Month in Ohio, and the fact that quilts are a family heritage for many families, so that quilts are passed down from generation to generation, and families share a part of themselves with other generations through quilting, too. Back then, quilting was really a social event, wasn't it? It certainly was. Not only was it, did it serve as a utilitarian point, as a matter of fact, in, in actually cutting out pieces of fabric, just what was available, because fabric back then was scarce, but also it served as a time to get together with neighbors and friends whenever a quilt was finely pieced. And that would mean the top portion of the quilt was together. It was time for a quilting bee. And these were social events for entire families and entire communities. They used that quote as an excuse to get together and quilt a quilt. And with that, the uh, wives would work on quilting a quilt. Um, the young men and husbands would get together at the same time, too. So the men were there, too, huh? And the children. The children were, were there as well. Okay. So it, it was a time of enjoyment, a time to get together. Is there such a thing as an antique quilt? Are quilts made back then still around? Oh, indeed they are. Miss Kingham County Extension Homemakers yearly have an annual quilt show and sale. Persons might want to mark that on their calendar. It's the weekend after Labor Day in Zanesville, Ohio. At that quilt show, we had several quilts that were uh, over 100 years old. More fascinating than that, some of them were signature quilts. In other words, persons had signed the na their names on the pieces that they quilted and that were put together. And uh, it was fascinating because people from all over the county were coming to read their family's names on that particular quilt. If we look at the older quilts, they're most interesting to explore. You'll find the beautiful color woolens are in some of the older quilts. Some of the older quilts also have the shinier satin fabrics that were very popular. Intricate embroidery designs. Uh, the velvets can be on them as well, as well as the regular muslin pieces. You have brought some beautiful quilts to show us, and if you could tell us a little bit about those. These were made, do you know who, who made all of these, or some of them? I can, yes, I can share that. Some of them are family quilts, and uh, as we focus on this one, this was uh, made by a grandmother, passed down to the son in the family, and it is specified that particular quilt will go to grandchildren, so you see, uh, in this particular quilting pattern, it's important in planning a quilt to actually plan the entire layout of the quilt. If you'll notice that one, the various colored rows are attached so that they form a ribbon or rainbow of pattern and color. And that particular quilt forms a rectangular, rectangular shape of color 
around the entire quilt. The pieces are small. They're hand quilted together by this grandmother. And by the way, this is the last time this grandmother was able to use her arms for quilting. So that this is the, her last quilt legacy. But uh, she hand quilted this together and then it was uh, pieced and hand quilted on a frame. And that is a, a lovely, lovely piece, very attractive. It seems hard for me to imagine that uh, way back people would sit down, women would sit down with a piece of draft paper and, and draft all this out, but that's true, that's what they did. That's what they did. They could sit down and actually sketch out and create their own designs. If a person were considering originating their own designs today, it would be a good idea to go to a graph paper and delineate the square, the size that an individual would want that. And that would vary upon the size of the quilt block that you would want. You could actually sketch out what you would want on that square and then cut that and, uh, into pieces of paper. It would be important, however, to allow a fourth inch seam around each piece that would be stitched together. And that allows for patterning and stitching those together. The next quilt you have to show is probably the oldest quilt on display, right? That's right. This is the oldest quilt that we do have. And this one, uh, this particular quilt is owned by Lola Paisley. And it is a family quilt. Uh, this was owned by her mother, or done by her mother. Lola tells me that this quilt was pieced in the 1940s and then quilted in the 1950s. As you see the variations of blocks and patterns, some of those squares were muslin pieces that came, quote, from feed sacks and were made into dresses. And that makes a quilt especially meaningful within a family as you look at patterns and pieces that have been made into dresses for family members. Is there a name for this particular pattern? This particular pattern it is a variation and it has uh, a variety of the squares put together. A lot of people would tend to call this a 16 patch because it does have the 16 squares and the variation of the squares as they are put together. That attractive colorful blue is so pretty with that quilt. Beautiful. And we have another one to show, plus we have some other patterns. Now, I, I can feel people getting excited and getting their fingers ready to do some quilting, and we will show people how they can start to do the process of quilting, and you'll tell them whether it's complicated or not. But here's another one you have to show us. This looks a little bit newer. Is this true? This is a newer quilt, and it is one that is a variation of a flower garden. This is hand quilted. It was given by a mother to her son for his birthday and combined birthday and Christmas present. And uh, this is a newer piece. It has used uh, not only the colorful calico prints, but also uh, included a lot of the variations of plain. And you can see the flower garden approach. Many, by the way, of those pieces have been used in uh, garments that were made by the mother for grandchildren. So that, again, is another variation and pattern that makes that quilt so special in that particular It family. does look like a garden. Mm -hmm. Before we get into the step-by-step -step process, um, be honest with us. How difficult is it to quilt? Quilting is not at all difficult. You don't really have to have prior experience or know exactly, quote, how to sew or be a seamstress. I've known persons who have decided at a later age they're going to pick up quilting or as a young homemaker they're going to start quilting and the baby quilts are so attractive or quilts for young people and actually done it and enjoyed it very much. Uh, quilting would involve a needle and thread. The quilter's thread is popular and is used um, with a lot of success and that is a cotton thread. However, others prefer to use the, um, the polyester covered cotton thread, which works well too. And of course, a fine needle that if you're hand quilting, that's all it takes to put the pieces together. It seems as a baby quilt would be the best way to start because it is smaller 
and it would give you a chance to experiment a little maybe. It, it is a good idea and as you find preschool children and school age children also love to have quilts their sizes to cozy down under as they're watching TV or just to throw over them if they get a little cool in a home. So, uh, and I've seen them variations of ways. You know, if a, pers if a little person enjoys a teddy bear, I could just see a teddy bear quilt. Mm -hmm. Or I know of another young man who loves cowboys and his mother made him a cowboy quilt. So you can see lots of, the creativity and individuality is up to the person. It's up to them, really. I've seen a quilt display at the fair year after year, and they're beautiful, and it seems as if the possibilities are endless. They certainly are, and the colors, the combination of colors and patterns truly make for an art form. Let's talk about the step-by-step -step process, but first, what sort of equipment is needed? If you're seriously into quilting and, and wanting to do some quilting, the equipment that would be needed, of course, you would need fabrics. And the fabric that is used a lot of times is a uh, muslin fabric. A cotton fabric is good or one that is washable. We find many of the cotton polyester blends that are very attractive right now and with the durable press finishes on them. But the, um, the muslin fabrics are especially popular. Is it best to go to a sewing store and buy all the material at once, or can we dig around and see if we have any scraps to put together? Oh, it's a good idea to look for scraps. The important thing in combining a quilt is to remember that the, the fabrics should be the same fiber content and the same finish. And you can readily see why that would be important, mm -hmm. because they'll be combined together in a total pattern. And that's important to figure out that together. That might be a little difficult when you do look around the house for extra material because you may not know what's in it. If Is you're that not a sure, that certainly could be a problem. And it would be important to use the same fiber content. And uh, actually, if, if individuals sew a lot or you know someone who sews a lot, perhaps they have fabric right there and won't have to be purchasing fabric for a quilt. What other equipment is needed? Of course, the thread that we have already talked about, a needle, a quilting frame might be a good idea if they're planning on quilting their own quilt. Uh, quilting frames can be a variety of ways. There is a large hoop that can be purchased and uh, the quilting then can be done on the lap. And we term that lap quilting. Also, there's a large hoop that has a stand on it that can be purchased and allow a person to just seated as we are quilt on that stand by bringing it up like a little table. And that is, once you quilt a piece, you carefully move the quilt over and then begin quilting the next portion of it. It's that. like a large embroidery hoop, in other it's words? It's like a large embroidery okay. hoop. The quilting frame does take up quite a space, and that's the one that would use uh, we'll quote, say, a dolly and a long length. And there are two dollies and, and two lengths. This takes up quite a space in a home. And uh, a lot of persons prefer to have those in rec rooms or sun porches, mm -hmm. you know, where there's, they have good lighting for quilting. Now, a hesitation I would have would be to put an investment in a quilting hoop if I wasn't sure I, I was going to like quilting. Is it necessary to buy one of those in order to begin quilting? No, it isn't really necessary to buy a quilting hoop. Uh, what an individual could do if they're not sure they're interested in quilting is they could perhaps begin by selecting one of the um, pre-quilted fabrics. And this is a fabric that has a print on it. And I have an example of one right here that I can show you, as a matter of fact, a couple of examples. And these, um, these are pre-printed and not pieced together. I've seen some of those in the sewing store. They look That's true. easy to do. And as we look at this piece, this is one that the print is rolled on. And it just looks a lot like a, 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 a piece that has been put together by hand. However, the print is rolled on. With this, 
what has been done is the fabric that is rolled on print has been used. The backing is a piece of muslin. And the inside of the quilt is the polyester fiber fill. Years ago, we saw the cotton fiber fill used. Years ago, they used a wide variety of different types of things, even old blankets. But today we find the polyester fiber fill is very popular with quilters. It is warm and also soft and serves as an excellent filling for the quilts. It probably doesn't bunch up as much as the cotton would. Is that That's true? That's true. It doesn't. Now this can be basted together. We have the, the front piece, the polyester fiber fill, and the backing. This is um, basted together and uh, then the quilting can be done just in the lap. So that if an individual isn't sure if they'll like the quilting, then they can go with something like this. That's a good Another idea. Another variation of this pattern that's interesting to look at is this one. And this is another piece that looks as if it has been quilted, but actually that's a rolled on print. And again, this has been hand pieced in the lap. You just follow the lines of the pattern? That's true. You can delineate and follow the lines of the pattern that you would want to. Okay. And in this one they have pulled out and quilted. And I, don't, I know it will be hard to see the quilting done on the back of this, but the, uh, they have pulled out the major lines of the print and quilted that. It seems as if the um, embroidery hoops are nice and hold the fabric taut and make it easier to work with. Uh, it isn't necessary. You can quilt those without that, and that would be to see if an individual does um, enjoy quilting or would be interested in trying that out. Okay. Let's get started quilting. Okay. What is the first step? What is the first step? And I brought along with me a couple of pieces that definitely do show cutting out the pattern pieces. You, some of you may recognize these. This is that little Dutch boy pattern mm -hmm. that is so popular, and I have one of the Dutch girl that I'll show too. One of the first steps is drawing out the pattern and then cutting it. This particular pattern has been cut evenly, and it's so important as one is quilting to cut evenly and make sure the pieces are cut perfectly. This particular piece has been cut neatly and carefully out. The next step then is to, in an applique quilt like this, is to lay the piece down as you would see it on the quilt as this one is done. With this, however, you will notice the raw edges are right here. It's important to fold these edges under for the applique. And a lot of persons for this will run a basting stitch one fourth inch around this, um, these pieces individually. And then that allows them to iron down easily. That's the basic stitch width is one fourth of an inch instead of the three eighths that we're used to? You can use one fourth or three eighths. Many people for the quilting will use the one fourth. They find that that works very well. Uh, but that then would be folded down a fourth inch and all of these pieces would be done in that manner. And this shows a, a variation of the Dutch girl pattern. Mm -hmm. But now the first step would be making sure they're cut evenly. If they're cut unevenly, even a fourth inch off. And especially with the pieces that are put together, you can have some difficulty in putting those together. Some people use a cardboard piece as a pattern and find that works very well with, for their purposes. Um, and that can be used quite well. But these are folded under a fourth inch and then a hand stitch is used for the applique. Can a sewing machine be used to quilt? Oh, certainly. A sewing machine can be used. Now, I, what I'm showing you with this, and I'll hold this up, this is a, the piece that's been put together. And you can see that this is a small triangular piece that's put together with another triangular piece. And if we fold this back and look at it, 
what has happened, these pieces are placed right sides together and then stitched mm -hmm. across and that is a small hand stitch and this is just a running stitch an in and out in and out hand stitch and you can see the importance in this seam is a fourth inch if we look at all of these these are a fourth inch how long does it take to piece a quilt such as that together okay this is just one square it takes quite a period of time Fast quilters can of. say, I can get this done in a month. However, someone who's just starting should be comfortable in allowing themselves some time with this type of thing. Surprisingly enough, an individual can pick this up as they sit down and uh, watch television or um, are waiting, perhaps, uh, on another person or different times in the car that they're waiting in. And it can go pretty fast. Well, it took me six years to complete an afghan, so I can't imagine how long it would take me to complete a quilt. It actually depends upon how long you have to stay with it. And certain persons I know carry their quilting with them everywhere, and they, they just declare they can have a quilt in a month. Then other persons who, who, who find spaces of time they need to set aside for it, may not be able to spend as much time with it. How about quilt pillows? Would that also be a good place to start? That is an excellent place to start and pillows are popular right now in the country look especially in the decor of homes and that can be especially popular to see with the quilted top the attractive ruffles makes a, a very nice pillow. It's something that can be done quickly. Uh, pot holders and this is a this is a cathedral window variation, and this is a pot holder that uh, has been done. That's a, a, an idea for an individual who's wanting to start quilting and, and uh, not wanting to take a lot of time to piece together a quilt, but wants to learn. Pot holders can be made very easily and quickly. They would make good gifts for Christmas. Too. Oh, they would. And let me show you this idea, too. Here's, here are some other ideas, but uh, this one, and pot yes, mm -hmm. consider a placemat, That's and this nice. could be any variation of the pattern. This is a spring tulip pattern, and this one is an applique pattern. But isn't that pretty? Wouldn't that look Beautiful. nice in a country home for a placemat? And that can be used as, uh, as a gift, uh, either for Christmas or I think all year round as a special gift to a special person. You could be just as creative with a placemat as you could with, an, uh, with oh, a quilt. Oh, certainly. Mm -hmm. Definitely you could be. Uh, some other variations, and this is a uh, folded star pattern, and these pieces are Lola Paisley's. Uh, these are folded star patterns that have been made into the uh, pot holders. Those are beautiful. When I'm seeing them, I see a three-dimensional look, and it, it really looks complicated to do, uh, but I've heard it's not that bad, right? This isn't that hard to do. Lola tells me she did this by folding the pieces and reading in a book how to do that. And they do have a beautiful, beautiful three-dimensional effect. Mm -hmm. And she says they go together quickly. A lot of people will want to use this type of thing for display only, to put on a wall in a kitchen. It would be perfectly good for that. Uh-huh. And if that's the case, you can, quote, cheat a little and uh, use some glue, glue. with this one. Uh, if you are planning on laundering that, though, you would want to make sure you stitched this down rather than glued that, and that would hold that well. After making those, it would be hard to set uh, a gooey pan down on it. I hate to think of that. True. They're beautiful. Aren't they pretty? Those are so pretty. And there are many variations and patterns. This one is especially pretty. The way she's combined that, the shadowing and the pattern for that. that you have one more nice. there you'd like to show us. That's, this is a cathedral a window. And this one could, of course, be made into a placemat. Or this could actually be a piece that you'd just put down in the middle of a table that would be attractive, colorful, and pretty. You could also frame that, couldn't you? Oh, certainly. You could frame these. Um, if you'll notice, the, in the center of the pieces look as if they're embroidered towards the middle of this portion. And 
pieces of ribbon have been used for their center of that. And that's a little variation in that pattern that can be done. This, by the way, is a beautiful quilt uh, pattern, and it's not that difficult to learn to do. Muskegon County Extension homemakers uh, do have persons who quilt and have quilting clubs. And I'm sure in various parts of the counties in Ohio, we do have that. And these patterns go together most attractively. For those at home who may not be interested in making their own quilt, but would be interested in having one in their home, what would be the best avenue to find a quilt? Auctions or flea markets? That's a, a good choice. The auctions or flea markets would be a good choice. Yard sales, possibly. Uh, and there are individuals who are willing to personally sell quilts they've made. So if you know someone who has quilted, that's a good possibility there. What's the going price for a quilt these days? The going quite price for a quilt would run like $350 Ooh. on up. Some of them are priced at 100 or so or less, depending upon the the uh, depending upon the use or that type of thing or the condition of the quilt. Mm -hmm. But a new quilt today, 350 on up, probably. I can understand that with all the work that's involved. There's a lot of work in with those quilts. What about an antique quilt? Same an price. antique quilt, uh, prices would vary, again, depending on the condition of the quilt, depending on the condition of the quilt. You'd probably have to take real good care of that quilt once you bought Indeed it. Indeed you would, and through the Ohio Cooperative Extension Service, we do have Kansas State University's research materials on quilt conservation and how to care for quilts and conserve those quilts that have been handed down in families. And that is available at the Extension offices throughout Ohio. Could you also recommend a few books? Books go to the library, but these are some fascinating books. Log Cabin Quilt Book by Carol Ann Wine is a fascinating book. Also, this um, Quilts of America by Erica Wilson is another fascinating book. Easy There's to read? Easy to read okay. and uh, enjoyable. Lab Quilting is another one, and this is for those individuals who want to be able to sit and quilt right on their lab. This is a book by Georgia Bone Steel. Thank you very much for being with us. I enjoyed it. I hope you did. I'll see you next time on Young Homemaker.